100 dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 20 in our series NerdDice.com, where we create a Ruby on Rails app to manage tabletop role-playing. And we have been working through trying to um, write get device set up for our application that handles user authentication. In one of the previous videos, we, uh, because um, device out of the box doesn't really work that well with Turbo or uh, Tailwind, we had to make some, some changes to get that working. And um, this is an exciting development. So in the, uh, the video on the uh, getting devised to work with Tailwind and Turbo, we actually had some uh, some interaction with uh, with some comments and, and some suggestions for uh, improving our application. And that um, Alexander here also um, submitted, and if I can find it. a pull request so um so we're gonna this is an exciting development in the life cycle of this project and uh stateless code this is the first time we've had a contributor who i didn't know personally um contribute anything in a stateless code video so uh, we had one other situation i think i'm it wasn't in the nerd dice repo but i put it in a nerd dice video where my friend martin uh um, made a pull request to the an old Rails 5 uh, repo that I've got here. So we're going to take a look at this and uh, evaluate whether we want to incorporate the changes in this pull request uh, and use this as a, uh, a teaching opportunity. So the, the primary purpose of this um, this series and even this this site is to, to teach concepts and uh, teach coding and uh, this, I think, uh, provides a, an excellent example to look at alternatives for how you might implement something and um, determine how to make things better and continuously improve. So uh, we'll take a look at this, we'll ev evaluate it, and then um, certainly thank our uh, contributor. So um, we've got here, uh, Alexander is the contributor here, and um, we will um, take a look at the um, at the commit here in the pull request. Will if the uh, if the changes are um, fine and not malicious or anything, then we can pull it down and um, add that that repo as a uh, as a remote. Check out the branch, uh, test out the changes locally, and then determine um, whether or not to. Um, to ultimately merge those changes into our repo. Um, we certainly want to, in dealing with the pull request, thank the uh, contributor, provide any feedback that we might think is helpful. And then uh, if you, um, depending on whether we accept or decline it, like pr provide a, a rationale uh, why we're doing so. So um, as noted, we're going to take a look at the um, the code here so that um, changes here, this is the gem file dot lock. So um, I'm using uh, Ubuntu here for my development. Um, this contribution was made on a um, on a Mac. You can see here, so some of the, um, the platform stuff has been added to the gem file dot lock. Um, I don't have a uh, contributing uh, page or anything like that that specifies anything about that. So um, that would be, actually, let's go and do that right now. Throw a, an item into our backlog to add a here in terms of priority. So um, I, I wasn't expecting to have collaboration this early on, so I, I haven't gone in and done anything with uh, 
contributing here. So um, the um, gem file stuff um, it lo all looks fine. Uh, and then you've got in this situation, so this is our tailwind.css. If we go and look in VS Code here, let's take a look at the current state and then we can kind of show some of the changes here. So this is app assets style sheets application.tailwind.css. So all we've got right now are um, kind of the Tailwind base components and utilities. This, this pulls in uh, essentially Tailwind preflight, which is um, very, very minimally um, styled and chooses to be unstyled on almost everything so that you've got more control and less surprising behavior here. So this is the, the file that the, uh, the changes are being made to. And you can see uh, an example of this in the, um, the version that was generated from um, our Rails G, uh, Rails generate, or no, sorry, Rails new with the dash dash CSS tailwind. Uh, this came in by default, kind of commented out. So you can see here, uh, what's being done, and this is a something that we used in the statelesscode.com stuff that I was doing on WordPress uh, with the the Sage uh, WordPress framework that uses Tailwind. Um, you can create a CSS class and use um, what Tailwind calls directives to apply a bunch of other Tailwind classes to a particular thing. So let's say we've got TW success button here. It's going to take that and apply all those different classes that we're doing there, similar to what we did in our video in our um, in our Tailwind helper, which was uh, which is deleted in this uh, pull request. So the, the recommendation from this pull request is to not use Rails helpers, but to use um, Tailwind directives as a basis for styling it styling things and we'll uh, we'll evaluate those alternatives and kind of see the differences between them as we go through this video after we're done um, evaluating the changes so this um, essentially delete the tail till and helper um, remove the include from application helper um, delete welcome helper which is probably not relevant to this particular pull request it was an empty class but um, I don't think it's necessary early on to um, to delete your helpers that are empty that get generated when you generate a controller or something. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of changes to our views, but they're pretty much all the same changes where you're taking what was a Ruby method here, say TW standard link, and changing it to a, um, a class literal. So that literal TW standard link now um, will be what goes what gets caught by the um, the directive there and it will apply those different um, tailwind classes to it so those are all the um, the changes there and you can see they're all uh, I've gone through these a little bit so I'm, I'm confident that there's nothing um, unusual here or anything um, and then in our test helpers, again, it's a deletion of the test file. Uh, so we can see here, I already commented back on the pull request. Um, so um, that I'm leaning toward it, my, my preference being uh, preferring using Rails helpers over Tailwind directives. Uh, and then um, there was a re respond back, HTML safe and raw are not safe for security purposes, uh, which I did use in that video. And um, I have done a little bit of homework on that and I've, uh, I'm convinced that I've made a mistake there. So irrespective of whether I merge the pull request or not, um, I'm going to make an, a modification to, um, to address that feedback. So, uh, what we're going to do now is, um, now that we've got this, we can go in and I can get the uh, so 
take this repo, add dot git to it, and let's get into our terminal. Oh, I've got caps lock on. branch is clean. I'm up to date with um, my origin uh, epic user auth. So now I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add a remote um, that points to this repo. So git remote add, paste this in, and um, dot git here. I need to name it. Uh, we'll call it the user's name here. So now I can fetch that remote. And we've got these things. So uh, what I can do is without even, so I'm on my current branch. I can uh, now check this out without necessarily creating a local branch. So git checkout and I'm doing the remote tracking branch here. So um, in the in Git, you've got essentially um, when you're doing branches, you've got, say, in this case, we'll, we'll use main because it's short. So Git checkout main. This is checking out to my local branch in on this computer um, of main. Uh, then you've got origin slash main, which is a a local branch tracking the remote. So you wouldn't make any commits or changes while you're doing your coding to this, but this, when you do git fetch, it updates that tracking branch origin slash main. And then uh, if you're going to push or do any inter interactions with the repository, you're going to, it will be instead of origin main, it will be origin space main, which will you'll use for that. So those are kind of the differences between those different things. So what I'm going to check out is the remote tracking, the local remote tracking branch of this. And you can see um, that we're in a detached head state here and it's explaining this um, for it. So we're in this detached head state right now and if we go and open up uh, VS Code, we can see that the, the changes have been made here. So um, I've got a Tailwind plugin. It's showing uh, for all these different colors. Um, there's a little uh, visual helper and indication here that has all of these different things. We can see that the um, if we go to app helpers that the uh, the tailwind helper here is gone uh, so we can take a look at this I should be able to um, just run bin slash dev here and it's showing rebuilding and done and let's um, take a look here uh, click around to the different places so we can see these um, from from a visual standpoint this is equivalent to what we um, what we had previously I don't except for maybe there um, unlock I'll check that out. I'll check that back out once I go into um, the um, back into my own version of this. So any one of these, you can see, um, we'll hit inspect here in HTML, and you can see the uh, the DOM class here, the HTML class, is that TW underscore alert underscore button. 
Uh, so that's how that, that works there. And uh, Tailwind directives, instead of um, doing um, anything to the HTML classes, what it does is when it sees that HTML class, it will apply those different styles at the CSS level rather than at the DOM level. So to contrast this now, let me switch into, uh, switch, check back out um, my branch. back to my branch um, and we've got now the commented out version here we've got our tailwind helper back um, so this is this is the the version that's at the tip of that um, device branch so if we go and do the um, the bin dev here again And we refresh. So uh, I had not applied anything to that button yet. So that's definitely something to um, to do. I just need to do that. It would be the the success button version of that rather than the um, the alert button. Uh, so unlock new is one that I missed, and um, Alexander. Um, caught so that that's uh, irrespective of whether I merge the pull request or not that is something that I want to um, to incorporate here but if I go back to say one of these that I do have styled and we inspect it here you can see that the classes the HTML classes in the DOM are the list of classes that are coming from my Ruby method in the helper so we've got say the success button those classes that I put there are the classes that are um, showing up in um, in the DOM as HTML classes. So the um, they're not entirely equivalent, and I think there's a place for both of them in a, uh, a Ruby on Rails project. So what I'm doing is the the fast version of um, or the, the do not repeat yourself version of I'm going to take all of these classes and list them as um, classes in the HTML markup itself. Um, and uh, the other, the version in the contribution in the pull request is I'm going to just have the one class or the rolled, rolled up uh, shortened version of those classes in the DOM. Um, and when you think about it, like performance wise, there might be situations you're sending less text, obviously, over um, your connection with the um, the Tailwind Directives version than you are with the uh, the list of classes version, but there are things that you lose when you do that, and I, I kind of um, started running into issues in my statelesscode.com um, design theme design when. Um, once you get it to just TW success button, you lose the ability to um, granular, kind of have the granularity of control once these things get to the browser. So uh, one of the ways we're going to use um, Rails in this project is to have interaction on the front end with stimulus, which is part of the, uh, the hot wire default that comes with Rails 7. And if I've got these classes listed out kind of in a granular fashion, then I can um, do things like toggling based on events, add classes, delete classes. I have more granularity of control on that than I do if I um, make everything into um, a consolidated single HTML class. So if I wanted to, um, on a particular event, change um, background blue uh, 500 to background blue 700 um, on something that had that TW success button, I would not be able to, to access that uh, background blue 500 class and toggle it off, uh, remove add classes individually um, using 
stimulus or something like that. So that's kind of the, um, the trade-off there. And um, I, I think at least early in development, my preference would be to have the, the, the granularity of classes in the HTML markup that I can use. And then only when um, there's a performance concern or something like that due to a pro proliferation of classes in the HTML markup would I start looking at um, consolidating that thing, like only if there are visible, um, noticeable performance de degradations would I uh, typically do that level of optimization in, uh, in the project. Again, that's my preference. If you know that your um, design isn't going to have particular uh, HTML classes uh, toggled on and off uh, from, for Tailwind, on the client side, then it, it they really would be essentially equivalent, and you'd want to you probably prefer the directives over the uh, the Rails helper in that case. So that's kind of the um, the rationale and the, the 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 real difference between those uh, those two design choices. So I will. Take a look. I think I'm going to. Um, so, let me check out that unlocks new item. Uh, the only other thing, like, and again, I haven't put any sort of contributing um, MD or anything like that um, on my site yet. Is uh, if I were to convert from a Ruby method. Uh, like this um, backdoor tail tailwind helper. Yeah, so TW alert button or whatever. If I were to convert that into a tailwind directive and a, an HTML class, I would probably convert those underscores into hyphens so that they, they look more like a, 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 a an idiomatic HTML class. Um, and if I were to, um, to actually merge this pull request in, I probably would either um, make the request to the contributor as part of the peer review process, or I would um, make the, the changes myself um, before merging it in. Um, but I think, so the unlocks, let's see if we can fix that unlocks situation. Unlocks new. I think that's what I called it. There we go got our button there. Um, let's click in through the rest of these, make sure I'm not missing anything else. No, I think that was the one view that I missed turning into a button. Um, so far, so we'll make that change. And then the other one that we had talked about was in this device, or sorry, the Tailwind Helper class. That um, I've got the, right now this um, Rubocop disable and Rubocop enable um, Rails output safety. Um, this came up as a security uh, Rubocop failure when I um, when I did this video. So. Um, I actually, turns out I don't need it at all. You only need and need, use uh, sparingly there, to use HTML safe or raw if you've got something that is um, like a an angle bracket or something like that that you're assembling together and wish to render as HTML. So we've got this here. I should be able to... Um, to now go in and 
all this stuff should still work. All of my styles still exist, and they still work fine without the HTML safe, which was um, completely unnecessary. And um, again, right now, it's not a um, not a real security concern because I wasn't taking any user input, but it's completely unnecessary, so just get rid of it. Um, you would only do something like that in um, in an emergency situation if you're um, assembling XML or something like that on the fly, which might happen with it uh, if you're doing like an inline SVG or something like that. But um, the preference, uh, according to Rubocop and uh, community there is to use content t tag instead of HTML safe whenever you can. So you could like content tag and then a Ruby block do and and then more kind of nested contact, content tags and stuff like that um, would be preferable to using raw or HTML safe in those cases. Uh, there is one more thing to note if you're going to use this helpers um, method for creating your um, or generating your, your Tailwind classes is that you have to have the classes show up in their entirety like this. So instead of uh, text gray 100 or something like that, if you went in and did um, something like text gray and then tried to um, you had a color value variable or something like that. This won't work with Tailwind. Um, so even if it if it got to the, um, I mean if it got to the DOM like this, the way that Tailwind works, and you can see it in the um, the Tailwind config here, is it looks for um, places where your content is. So public HTML uh, the helpers Ruby files, uh, anything in our app JavaScript file folder that uh, ends with .js, and then our app views, um, anything ending in um, ERB, HAML, HTML, Slim, etc. And um, the reason why this is the case is uh, Tailwind, when it's assembling, like Tailwind's got a, a a vast, vast number of um, different classes and CSS stylings associated with that. And when you're actually um, compiling this and sending it either to a, a dev app, you can see whenever we change something uh, in the um, um, in the bin dev process, there it will rebuild. Uh, and what it's doing is it's it's scanning your source code files so that helper file that we had there, J JavaScript files, um, your HTML markup, anything like that. It's taking them and anything that is a Tailwind class, it's going to pull that into the generate, like the, the final generated version of your CSS so that it's only using what you are using in your application. Um, but the, the drawback on that is, or the, the watch item there is uh, you can't, dynamically generate partial um, CSS classes. So if you're going to do something like um, a condition, if our condition, and then um, something like this, where, you, where we're doing the interp interpolation uh, here, um, you, you can't just um, like do the partial there. It would have to be the full um, class there. Text 100, text 300 or whatever um, that you'd be using rather than um, you could, if you, the, the wrong way to do this would be this the dynamically generated uh, class there assuming I actually spell it right uh, would not be picked up by tailwind so um, you just can't do it that way it and that goes for your your view files 
it goes for helper files, it goes for, for JavaScript. You need to always deal with classes as their entire name and not um, programmatically generate them because there's no way for Tailwind to know to actually include that, that class by, by the method it uses, which is scanning those source files. So a uh, reminder for future me as I'm trying to uh, add more stuff and refactor stuff, um, or to you if you're doing the, the helpers version of this, uh, just watch out not to make that uh, that mistake. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So those are the, the two changes that we've made. I should be able to uh, run RuboCop. And if I were to um, evaluate the change uh, for, if it were actually about to merge the change, I would go in and make sure that uh, RuboCop works and that the um, uh, all the tests pass and everything like that in the, uh, in the branch that I'm evaluating. So we go now, Rails test system and test. All right, so we're good here. Um, I'm going to, before I commit this, I'm gonna go in and um, uh, address the pull request so that we're not um, leaving um, Alexander uh, high, and, high and dry here. So we'll go to our, our repo in the pull request, and I'll write a a comment here. Um, actually, I'll I'll commit locally so that I can refer to. Well, I'll comment, refer to my commit, and then uh, close the the pull request. And then I'm also going to begin because this is a, a, a completely legitimate uh, way of structuring your app. I'll refer to it in my issue as an alternative. Uh, for how you're going to do, how you could do that. This is uh, not a um, um, top-down, one-size-fits-all, there's a best choice for every particular application type of deal. This is a um, programmer happiness, whatever um, works best for you in terms of your productivity and um, just how you d determine to make your, your standards for your um, your application. So um, I, I encourage you to, to try both ways, see which way you like better. Um, again, in the same app, you can use both methods. They're, they're not um, necessarily um, mutually exclusive. Um, you, you can kind of start out with the, uh, the helper version or even with the, I'm going to put all the, the uh, classes in the, uh, the view file itself and then um, kind of once you once you do the manipulation of the view file itself, then you can refactor it out into a helper method. And then once you've, uh, you're confident that you don't need the level of granularity and maybe you've got, um, I don't know, a thousand classes in your HTML and you notice that it's running slower, you can um, change that and... Um, and optimize it using Tailwind directives. So I'll pause and I'll write my uh, comment on the pull request. Uh, we'll take a look at it and then um, I'll write my commit on my branch and then we'll, um, we'll go from there. All right, so I've got my pull request comment here. Preview it, make sure it looks the way I want it to, I think we're good. So I'll add that comment.
Oh, I'm going to also mark this with the good first issue label. And now I'll go in to my um, repo here, make sure I'm on the correct branch. I am. Take a look at our diff. That's what we want. Write my commit message. Pause and do that. All right, I've got my commit message um, making reference to um, what has changed here, um, referencing both the uh, the user and pull request that was um, that um, brought this up. Now our log copy that commit reference push to our remote branch here go back to our pull request Our issue. And I'll just pause and write this comment. All right, so I've got my um, I'll add some credit here. the right user. I didn't just type it or anything. So I've got the, the comment there, which I think gets referenced still in the request. Whoa, that was some quick feedback. Let me take a look at that. Thank you. That is, uh, that's great. So uh, we'll take a look at our our build, build past. So I think we can close this one out. Uh, this has been one of my favorite episodes of the, uh, that I've done since, uh, since starting recording these. I'm almost to 200 published videos and uh, I, I, I it's really cool to have um, collaboration and everything. So uh, thank you again, Alexander, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.